Ladies and gentlemen, my first guest this evening is a writer and an actor who has starred in The Mindy Project, A Wrinkle in Time, and Ocean's 8. Her new film is Late Night. So you went to our parents' parent company in order to make this interview? Yep. And you have no experience in comedy? No, no, I'm obsessed with comedy. No, I've seen every episode of the show. I, I've read every book written about it. I do a little stand-up. Where? If you have a problem, ask a chemist. She'll always have the solution. <laughs> Which kills with people who know about chemistry. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Mindy Kaling. Today. Fantastic. And I did not get that kind of entrance. You not, got that kind of entrance. And not just because they applauded for me. I can sense they're cool and smart people. Very much. Very Do you much. know what I mean? Pretty sure, absolutely. They're also physically attractive. And good looking. Very, yeah, very, yes. I yes. scanned the audience and I was like, this is a bunch of smoke shows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, nice to ha see you again. I'm so happy to be here. I've been lucky enough to see a fair amount of you recently <laughs> because I, I, I interviewed the Montclair Film Festival for uh, for late night when, mm -hmm. when you when you showed it there. Thank you so much for being there. Thank you. Night. I went that to your home for a short you, time. Yeah, you. I got you drunk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Briefly, afternoon day drinking with Mindy Kaling. It was great. Now, uh, you went to uh, Dartmouth and, and you have a fancy playwriting degree. Right? Is the is the yes. is the degree in playwriting? Yes. Yeah, I was. Thank you. Thank you. I'm educated. I'm not just beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I went to I went to college. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. So fancy playwriting degree. Yes. Were you always were you always writing even as a child? Mm -hmm. Always. And well, because yeah. And 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 did you did you write comedy as a child? Well, I um, my mom was a doctor, and I was a real latchkey kid. We weren't. Let to have any babysitters or anything because they were too suspicious of American people. <laughs> so I would go to my mom's office and she was an OBGYN. So there's one office where she would talk to patients, one where she would do exams, and one where she would draw blood, like a phlebotomy office. Sure. And so after school, I would just go to the phlebotomy office. And if they had to draw blood, they would ask the patient, like, are you cool with the six year old being there? <laughs> She's the doctor's daughter. And and for the most part, they said yes, and if not, I would stand in the hallway. <laughs> all, all this to say that there was a typewriter in there, and what I would do until my mom finished work was, she's like, you can read or you can write, that's it. So I would sit with the typewriter. This is making me sound really old. <laughs> I'd sit with the typewriter, and I would just like write little plays. So and, and be adorable doing it, because this is... Oh, no. This is the look back then. Oh, no. No, I'm horrible. It's fantastic. Those glasses are coming back. <laughs> they, those are hip glasses. They are hip glasses. Yeah. This is, I just want to bite those cheeks. Oh. How, old are, how old are you here? Uh, I think I'm five there. Five? And, uh, do, no, you have I'm a so, daughter. Your daughter's so two proud. now? Yes, my daughter's one and a half. Does she, is she, do you see a resemblance? Do you guys look alike? I think she does, unfortunately, look a lot like that. <laughs> that is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Do you remember, uh, how old were you, and do you remember the first joke you ever wrote? Well, um... When I was around six or seven, and I was, again, I was working, I would be after school, mm. I would write these little one-act plays, like one-page plays. And then between my mom's patients, I would run over to her office and be like, read this. And she is, you know, she was always very, very hard on things to make her laugh. She would not laugh if she didn't think it was funny, even to a six or seven-year-old. Yeah. And so I wrote a play about a haunted house where um, a mummy, a witch, and a Dracula, a vampire, <laughs> lived, okay. lived, okay. lived, and uh, lived together in a haunted house. And the witch thought that the house was was um, kind of run down. And she said to the mummy and, and the Dracula, uh, "How much are we paying in mortgage on this haunted house?" <laughs> because I I just learned about mortgages from sure. my dad. And so <laughs> I showed it to my mom, and she didn't laugh out loud because who, literally who could laugh out loud at that that stupid play? But she smiled, and she's like, "I like this." So that was the first. That wow. was the first joke wow. I can remember writing. Were they okay with you becoming a writer? Yeah, they loved it. But they were. Um, they loved it because they loved growing up. We listened to like Nichols and May 
on long car rides. We listened mm -hmm. to that later. I, I would watch Seinfeld, and, and they, they loved comedy, even though I don't have anyone in the business on either side of my family. Mm -hmm. But they loved it. They just wanted me to be extremely successful <laughs> so they could <laughs> brag to people. So there was still a lot of pressure. When did that come around? When did they start bragging? I remember when I slapped Steve, Steve Carell on the second episode of The Office. <laughs> they were like, that was cool. It is cool. You're He's... slapping really funny people. <laughs> well, you got the new film, Late Night, um, uh, where you play a, a, a young writer who's it's her first comedy writing job. What's, what's your character's name again? Molly Patel. Molly Patel. And uh, Emma Thompson is your co-star. Mm -hmm. And we just had her on recently. Uh, just Was it last night? Just said last night to talk about it. Do you, what was your first memory of meeting her? Was it? Did you ever see her when you were younger, like on stage or in in the films? Yeah, when I was eleven, my mom dragged me to see Much Ado About Nothing, the movie. Sure. And I was so mad about it because Why? I didn't know anything about Shakespeare, and it sounded really boring to me. And it's much um, to do about nothing. Why would you want to go see something that's about you? nothing? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so I went to go see it with her, and it is so funny and so well made and her performance is fantastic and she's so beautiful that I just became really obsessed with her and in fact I asked my mom I demanded that we go see it again the next weekend and so I just been tracking her career since so what was that like to to work with her then to like write something for her and to work with her was that was that nerve-wracking or just sort of joyful it was nerve-wracking but the thing with Emma is that she is um, I don't know you you've met her sure. she just plows through any nervousness and she just wants everyone to be really comfortable and she does this thing that I really love which when you work with um, young actresses and that are new in the business a lot of times they they don't want to really say like what they really feel about things because they don't want to offend anyone because they're just Hotels. sorry <laughs> hey hey my, my watch hold on hold on hold my on. watch Got a phone call and I tried to put my hand over it because I forgot to put it to sleep and it was a it was a call from Marriott Hotel. It was in a, your awards your awards program for Marriott. Yes. Interrupted my touching story <laughs> about Emma Thompson. Wait a second. Hold on. Hold on a second. I have so many. You're rich. Why do you need an awards program? <laughs> I, 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 this is how you get rich. You go for the rewards. <laughs> exactly. I also steal rolls from Au Bon Pain. I don't even, you know, I don't even know. I have so many more questions about your financial situation. <laughs> I don't use an awards program. He has... Here's the thing. No, Hold on. Has, here's the thing. No, no. Hold here's on. the thing. He has the, he has the number one show on TV. And he's like, oh, I gotta make sure that if I travel, <laughs> that me and my wife and my three children are being hosted in an economical way. Sure. You get put up everywhere. Sure, sure, but we can upgrade. I don't even know. I, I'm in a movie with Emma Thompson. Like, who cares? Whatever. <laughs> like, I put my hand over it thinking, I know that if you put your hand over it, it just tells it to go away because I forgot oh, to put it on really sleep before subtle. the show. <laughs> really subtle. Continue. I tried. I was trying. I was trying. Can we play that back? Can we play yes. back the moment when I was trying to do that? I'm so sorry. Please accept my apology. It's fine. I was trying to do this so it would just stop, and I thought, okay. oh, damn, did I just answer the phone on my wrist? And then I thought, well, I'll know in a moment if they start talking. You know, you know when this ends, he's going to be like scrambling, like, ah, oh, I hope I still got that reward. <laughs> I hope I didn't delete that. Hold that thought, Mindy Kaling. We have to take a commercial break. We'll be right back with more of the talented Mindy Kaling.